Okay, so you made a mesh for your stairs and your games, and it works when it's like flat, right? But today you want to change how your level looks like, and you want to add a slope maybe. So let's rotate everything here. And then you can see our problem is that the rails in real life wouldn't rotate together. It should always be vertical in the world space, right? We don't see rails like this. If you want to fix this, one way is to like just make another set of model, but that takes more time. And today I want to share a way using math in the material. And by using the world position offset in the material, we can actually rotate it like this. So now to explain the math, this rectangle now represents our stale rails. So now this green orange is the one that we're gonna rotate and say we rotate about like a 45 degrees. So now this angle here will be our angle theta, which is 45 degrees here. The orange rectangle now, it's not what we want, right? And we have two options here. Option one is to move it along this direction so our new triangle becomes something like this. Since we know the height of this rail, which is like Z, we know that we can push every vertices on this direction of Z tangent theta. I tried this out, but it actually kind of messes up the scale of the stair rails. You can see the blue square, the height is definitely bigger than our original black rectangle. So actually what I ended up doing is to actually rotate every vertices. So say we know this point and we're gonna rotate this clockwise to this point here. Our new rectangle will have a first side here and we do the same one to this corner too. Our pivot will be down here and the same rotation. So that gives us our new blue rectangle. This angle here is also theta. And the good thing about this is that it actually maintains its length of the side. It's the same length on all the sides, except it's kind of skewed here. And now the operation we want is for every vertices on this new rectangle, find its pivot point down here, and then rotate it clockwise with a angle of Theta. Now we can easily do this in the local space of the rail itself. So for example, for this point, its component will use x, y, z. Its pivot point down here will be just x, y with the z in the value of zero. So that's the math explanation of what we're gonna do now. And we're gonna realize this in the material graph of Unreal Engine. Now that we understand the math that we're gonna use, let's jump into the material graph. So basically the most important part is we're gonna use this node called rotate about axis and we're gonna need four input here. Normalize rotation axis, rotational angle, pivot point and position. So when we open our static mesh tab, we can go to the show here and click show pivot. So we can see the three axis of this static mesh. We have the Z on the height of the mesh, X on the length and the Y here, which is pointing like perpendicular, is the one that we're gonna use as the rotational axis. So coming back to our material graph, we know that the normalized rotational axis will need to input 0, 1, 0, which is the Y. And for the rotational angle, we're just gonna use a parameter node. So to add a parameter, you just right click and search for parameter and choose the scalar parameter and then you can rename it to rotational angle. The pivot point is actually each vertices, but we replace its Z component to zero. So what we can do is we get the absolute world position node first. We do a transform position from absolute world space to local space. We multiply it by 110, so that makes the Z component zero and feed it to the pivot point. And for the position is the local space position of our mesh. And for the rotate about axis node, if we expand this here, there's a very important field called period. Now, depending on the unit that you're gonna input, 
for the rotational angle here, the period will be different. For example, if you're using radius, maybe you will want to input um, 6.28, which is 2 pi here. But in our case, we're just going to use the normal degree for the unit. So we set our period to 360, which is a full circle. So the output of this node is actually the offset. It's the difference between our rotated position and the original position. And since we're going to input this into the world position offset, this is exactly what we want. What we only need to do is to transform this vector back from local space to world space because everything we did here previously was in the local space, which is the space of the static mesh itself. But for world position offset to work, we need to transform it back to world space. And after that, we just hit apply. Okay, so now back into our level here, if we click on our slope here, we can see that its rotation is 45 degrees. So if we go to the material here, we can see our rotational angle parameter. And if we increase it to 45, let me just type it in. We made it perfectly vertical to the world space. So this is um, pretty nice if you're like prototyping your level and you still need a lot of changes to your level. Maybe the designer wants it to be like a 30 degree slope and you can just go to your material and type in 30 and set the rotation back to 32 on the stairs. And then you can fix your rails this way. But if you look at these wood poles, you can see it's still a bit skewed. So it's not the perfect solution. You obviously might want to remake your mesh once it's finaled, but if you're in the prototype phase, this is like a quick setup for frequent changes. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next one.